in this video we will be looking at some of the features you would need to know how to interpret and report a retrosternal goiter. This is the thyroid gland and this is where the normal thyroid gland resides. In certain individuals the thyroid gland has hypertrophy of one or two of its lobes and in some instances the hypertrophic lobe extends in freely below the level of the thoracic inlet. When it extends beneath the thoracic inlet, it is called a retrosternal or substernal extension. You need to understand several of the surrounding structures and also important anatomical landmarks in order to report correctly. The important things that should be noted on the report are its effects on the trachea to see whether it is compressed and the level of inferior extension and on a coronal image whether it extends below the level of the aortic arch and on a sagittal image whether it has posterior mediastinal extension or not. Several features have been known to be associated with the requirement for a sternotomy and an intrathoracic approach when evaluating and resecting a retrosternal goiter and they include extension below the level of the aortic arch, a dumbbell-like appearance, extension to the posterior mediastinum and a thoracic component that is wider than the thoracic inlet. You should be aware of these when reporting the extent of the retrosternal goiter. In this case we can see that the esophagus is uh, slightly compressed but um, majority of the goiter is located above the aortic arch and without those features. References containing important links are attached below.